In this video, we want to present you with the capabilities of mind fusion diagram controls for pan and zoom of a large diagram. We've generated a diagram with 600 nodes. Next to it, to the left on your screen, you see the overview control. The overview control is used in large diagrams, mainly to bring quickly into view the desired portion of the flowchart. It always presents a miniature version of the diagram and can be scrolled if needed. In our sample, we have turned on the zoom feature of the overview control, which allows interactive zoom by dragging with the mouse. Another control to zoom and pan the diagram is the zoom control that you see right now. It supports a variety of settings and appearance options. Here, we use it as it is in terms of functionality settings, but have changed its background to light gray. Mind Fusion diagram controls have a rich user interaction model, and now you see another way to implement pan and zoom in a flowchart through mouse actions. You can pan the diagram when you click on it and drag it with the mouse. Scrolling is implemented through the mouse wheel. As you can see now, the pointer remains static, but the diagram zooms in and out. We move the mouse wheel. Finally, diagram libraries support a method that can fit the diagram in the current screen size. We've bound this method to a button in our application. The controls, events, and properties of the diagram library that are used to perform pan and zoom are universal among MindFusion diagramming components for all platforms. In this tutorial, we will continue with a step-by-step -step guide that demonstrates how to implement those features in WPF. We start by creating an empty WPF app solution. We add the references to the three MindFusion libraries that we will use, Common WPF, Diagramming WPF, and Licensing. Now we add two namespace mappings. One is Diag, which refers to the diagramming namespace. The other is MFC, and refers to the UI and common namespaces. Then, we will add two columns and two rows to the layout grid. We make the first column 200 pixels wide, and then we leave all the remaining space for the second column. The first row is 50 pixels high, and the second row takes the rest of the space. Now we add a horizontal stack panel with the controls. First, we have a text box where the user can type the desired count of nodes to be generated. Then we have the button, whose click generates the nodes. Finally, we have a button that fits the whole diagram into the screen. Next to the stack panel, we will place the overview control. The remaining area on the grid will be taken by the diagram control. We place the diagram control inside a ruler control. This allows us to spot immediately the scale of the diagram. Now, we should already be able to render diagrams. Let's run the application. Here's the diagram. We can create shapes and scroll the view area. So far, so good. Let's go on with the rest of the features. 
First, let's generate a graph depending on the count of nodes the user has chosen. We add a click event handler to the Generate Graph button. In it, we first clear all current nodes from the diagram. Then, we try to parse the text the user is given in the Nodes Text field. We need two class variables. One is an integer, which must keep the count of nodes between method calls. The other is a rectangle, which will indicate the size of shape nodes. Before we continue, let's add a list with brushes to be used by the newly created diagram nodes. We are building a fractal graph structure, so we want the nodes at each level to be colored differently. We also use two methods. The first one is random tree. We call it recursively to generate the nodes at each level of the tree. The methods that are useful to know here are create shape node and create diagram link from the factory class of the diagram. With each new node, we increment the counter of nodes till we reach the value set by the user. The arrange method is a simple one. We create an instance of the fractal layout and call its arrange method. That's how you apply all automatic layout algorithms in MindFusion diagram controls. Now, if we run the application, we should be able to generate a fractal graph. Let's say we want it to have 600 nodes. We click Generate, and here is our graph. It is a big one, and we can only view it by using the scroll bars. Let's add the overview control that will help us explore the graph. We add the overview control in the first column of the grid. We place it in a border. The document property must be bound to the diagram that will appear in the overview window. The other property that we use is allow zoom. By default is false, and you cannot zoom diagrams from the overview window. Now let's run the application. When we create a graph, we can see it in the overview. Dragging the marker on the selection rectangle is a convenient way to look at portions of this large graph in detail. Let's now add the zoom control, which is also a handy tool. We add the zoom control in the same grid cell as the diagram. You can see that there are various options to customize it. We adjust the zoom factor and the scroll step, but the most important property is the target. We bind it to our diagram. We also set the Z index of the control to 1 to let it render above the diagram. We can use the control to zoom and pan the diagram now. That's nice, but it will be better if we can do the same with the mouse. Panning is easy to do by just setting the behavior property of the diagram to pan. In order to zoom with the mouse, we need to handle the preview mouse wheel event. In it, we get the amount of scroll with the mouse and calculate a new zoom factor to apply to the diagram. We do not allow the zoom factor to be less than 5. 
Five is small enough. As you see now, we can freely move the diagram on the screen now. We can also zoom the graph by scrolling the wheel. That's great! We have just one more thing to add. The method that will fit the diagram at once into the current window of the application. We need to handle the click event of the fit button. In it, we find the rectangle that contains all nodes in the diagram and inflate it with 50 pixels to give the diagram a small margin. Then we call zoom to rect to make the control zoom the provided rectangle to the visible area. Let's see the result. We can see the whole diagram now and use three different options to pan and zoom it. The overview control, the zoom control, and mouse interaction. And that's the end of this tutorial. As always, we've provided a link to download the sample with all necessary libraries in the description section under the video. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion developer tools.